The red cedar trees, they look nice, they make great furniture, but the conifer tree is negatively impacting Oklahoma's watershed, and they're a dangerous menace during wildfire season. Now the Oklahoma legislature is taking action to get the problem under control. Steve Shaw is back from Leedy, Oklahoma with more on what's being done. Steve. Rich, the State House of Representatives last week passed legislation. If the Senate approves it and the governor signs it, would set in motion a water conservation effort that for this state would be historic. There's still a problem down in there. They're still consuming a lot of water. Well, that's probably your seatbelt. Jimmy Emmons patrols a 7,000 acre farm and range in Dewey County. It's been in Emmons family for nearly a hundred years. Last summer we worked on, on this pasture here, and so we, we cut and stacked these in piles. There's a company out of Stillwater that's coming now that will grind them piles. One of Emmons and his wife Ginger's missions in life for the last decade or so has been to rid their land of as many eastern red cedar trees as they possibly can. Eastern red cedar is a, a, a form of tree, cedar trees, that, that is native to Oklahoma, but that was really brought in and enhanced uh, during the 30s and the 50s uh, due to wind erosion. And they were planted in shelter belts uh, by the government to reduce the amount of wind erosion we had. And, and they were great. They're, they're great wind breaks. Uh, they, they're, they're kind of pretty to look at at times. A lot of people call them Christmas trees. Uh, but what they didn't realize, and once again, sometimes these unintended consequences that we have, um, how prolific they can be. Emmons says red cedar trees are slowly sucking the life off of his land. They cause erosion. They rob nutrients from the land. And Emmons says research shows cedar trees each consume 5 to 30 gallons of water every day. The South Canadian River that runs south of Norman and Tuttle basically starts up here. Canton Lake, which is the head of the North Canadian River, is 35 miles away. When you have tens of thousands of these trees growing in a watershed, or hundreds of thousands of them growing, every day they're consuming huge amounts of water. We study it and we've, we've kind of studied it to death, but we haven't really done anything. Oklahoma Water Conservation Executive Director Trey Lamb says red cedar trees have become a runaway train. We know that eastern red cedars are growing rapidly. We have 15 million acres in Oklahoma infested with eastern red cedars. That's twice as many acres as we have harvested crops. Lamb says this satellite map shows how the cedar infestation progressed in the lower Midwest between 2000 and 2018. And they're growing at a rate of 300,000 acres a year of infested, and, and it's about a half a billion dollar economic impact on the state of Oklahoma from loss of uh, rangeland forage for cattle, um, loss of uh, income from wildlife, loss of water resources, loss of recreation, um, all of those things add up, so that's a significant economic impact. And if we continue to let it grow exponentially like that, um, it's, you know, it's going to get completely away from us. Emmons says cedar trees and the recent drought dried up entire bodies of water, including what used to be this small lake he and his grandfather used to fish on back in the day. You can tell it's about 20-some foot deep uh, when it's full of water, but it hadn't had water in it in about... 10, 15 years. Right? Five oh. years ago. They're losing land here. All they're trying to do is save structures, try to save homes. A wildfire of historic proportions burned 437,000 acres in Dewey and surrounding counties. 70 structures, including homes, were lost. And that wildfire was really fueled by the eastern red cedar. They have oil-based sap in them. And so when they, they catch a fire, they literally explode and, and get thousands of degrees. And uh, it's a fire that you cannot control and you cannot stop on a day when the wind's blowing 30 to 40, 50 miles an hour. Yemens, other farmers and ranchers in the area, and the federal government are still today renting skid steers to clear land of burned cedar trees an endeavor that costs well north 
of $200 an hour. And this isn't just a west or northwest Oklahoma problem. The North Canadian River that begins at Canton Lake is the biggest source of water for the largest metropolitan area in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. It's really hard to put a price tag on water. State Representative Mike Dobrinsky authored the bill that passed the House last week. It would provide $3.2 million for a massive study area universities would help with that will measure the amount of water clearing massive amounts of cedar trees will provide. There's proof that addressing these will, will make a difference. The water will return and so will the grass and ecolo ecological balance again will, will be something that benefits all of us. This is not unique to the North Canadian watershed. Uh, it is a problem that we are going to have to address statewide. It's going to take a lot of money and a long-term commitment to doing that. But we certainly can't ask people to support it or to, to help fund it and be okay with the commitment that's going to take until we show them proof. And I think between what you've seen and, and the studies that we have and the research from 30 years ago that is spot on today, uh, we can't kick that can down the road any longer. Water is so scarce and so precious, especially from the western side of the state into Oklahoma City, that uh, we've got to do something to preserve that water. That and this project that we're working on uh, is going to show if we can manage these cedar trees that Canton Lake and the North Canadian watershed can provide more water to Oklahoma City if, if we get this project done. Representative Dobrinsky says the legislation he proposed could be on the governor's desk in less than a month.